Last Friday, the world learned the hard way what happens when you outsource your IT security to third-party companies. CrowdStrike, a major cybersecurity company with tens of thousands of customers, including Microsoft and hundreds of others in the Fortune 1000 company list, had a bug with one of their most popular products, the Falcon platform. Now, Falcon is a cloud-based security platform that has a number of services under its umbrella, including next-gen antivirus, endpoint detection, and firewall management. Now, the reason that I specifically mention Microsoft as one of the companies that relies on CrowdStrike is because the world's reliance on Microsoft products, specifically Windows, and then in turn, Microsoft's reliance on CrowdStrike and specifically how the Falcon program linked into the Windows kernel is really the cause of most of these severe and widespread errors that created the technology meltdown that Y2K wishes it was. Flights were delayed, the banks didn't work, Hospitals didn't know anything about how many patients they had coming in or who was already there and what they were there for because all of their computers went down. The stock market went down as well, but you guys already know about these outages from news headlines because, of course, the white collar world runs almost entirely on Windows. But I think this short description of a diesel truck employee's 40 minute workday on July 19th perfectly sums up the extent of this bug. The lifts won't operate. Can't disarm the building alarms, and they've been blaring nonstop. The cranes are all locked in standby return or error mode. Laser aligners are all offline. Lathe hardware runs, but the controllers are all down. Can't email suppliers. Phones are all down. HVAC is also down for some reason, and it's starting to get hot in here. The police drove by and they told us to close up for the day since we don't have 911 either. Alarms for the building are all offline or in error mode, so we chained things up as best we could. Might still drive by a few times today. We don't know how many orders we have. We don't even know who's on schedule or if we'll get paid. The CrowdStrike bug goes a whole lot deeper than just having to restart your work laptop 15 times to be able to log in again, you see their software hooks deep into the Windows NT kernel. So the Falcon program that had a bug on these machines is running as a privileged process on the Windows operating system. And this update that CrowdStrike pushed out to every client's production system, which means they either completely ignored the staging system for an update like this, or the QA process at CrowdStrike is just that bad. Uh, but anyway, the update in question was meant to fix issues with slowness and latency in the Falcon program that were there in previous versions. But of course, we now know that this update contained a bug, specifically a null dereference error in the C++ code of the Falcon Sensor program. This bug caused the program to try and read an invalid area of memory. Now, normally, if a program does this, Windows just kills the program. But because this particular program had system privileges, the only thing for Windows to do was to go kamikaze and crash the whole operating system in order to kill off that buggy program. So this is what's ultimately causing the blue screens of death, or in the case of these lifts, alarms, cranes, and other equipment at the diesel truck place, it's what's causing what I believe to be an embedded Windows system to crash. You see, I've talked a lot about the Windows desktop and its consequences on this channel, but the consequences of embedded Windows are honestly much more grim because of how many machines that we would think of as basically machines that run society that depend on them. I mean, cranes and lifts, these are the kinds of things that you wouldn't even think of as having computers in them that can have a bug like this. But it turns out 
a lot of heavy machinery relies on embedded Windows systems. I'd also imagine that there's some workplaces out there that primarily rely on Linux and BSD servers, and their employees might all be using Macs, and upon first glance, it might appear to us that this kind of company doesn't rely on Windows at all, and so they wouldn't have been directly affected by this CrowdStrike bug. But then you find out that this hypothetical company is using Active Directory for authentication. And so that server ends up going down and then nobody can log into anything until it's fixed. And by the way, that fix for this CrowdStrike bug in most cases requires some kind of physical intervention, like creating a snapshot of the affected system and then you take the disk out, you mount it to a working system, remove the .sys file for the Falcon sensor, put the disk back into the affected machine, and reboot it. Now, just the other day, Microsoft did release a recovery tool that can be flashed onto a bootable USB drive and so this should allow you to fix Windows computers that are affected by the CrowdStrike bug a little bit easier because now you can probably fix it without having to yank the disk out, mount it to another computer, and then put it back in. But this is assuming that all of your affected systems have USB ports. I'm not too sure if cranes and lifts have USB ports, and you know, considering that so many PCs these days don't have USB-A ports, hopefully uh, people in the offices that are making these recovery tools have USB-C drives <laughs> available to boot from. And you know, it's already difficult enough to fix systems that are stuck in a boot loop when you can actually physically put your hands on them. But of course, there's millions more remote Windows systems that are in different cloud services. Now, one solution that I have seen posted for Amazon Web Services that probably would work for most other cloud providers is to take your broken Windows nodes offline, mount their disk to a working node, delete the sys file for the CrowdStrike kernel module, and then reboot that broken node. So pretty much the same thing I just described with the physical computer, but you're doing this all virtually. So it sounds like this would be easier to do and possibly even something that you can automate since again, we're talking about virtual systems. But when everyone in the world is doing this with their EC2 instance, the storage latency for Amazon's cloud goes through the roof. Because remember, the cloud is just some other guy's computer. And when half the globe is hitting that guy's hard drive, creating snapshots so that they don't lose any data of millions and millions of systems at once and then mounting those disks to other systems, the cloud is going to struggle to keep up. In fact, the whole internet was probably experiencing latency issues thanks to this bug. You know, there's a certain poetic irony in a broken update being pushed out to what is essentially an antivirus program causing more damage than any other malware attack in history. And the worst part is, almost nobody is going to learn their lesson that letting a third-party company do all of your cybersecurity for you by installing buggy software into the kernel of your system is a bad idea. The employee that pushed the update out will almost certainly be fired. IT teams are going to be working overtime this week and probably for weeks to come. And I'm sure a lot of money is going to be spent in different places at these corporations that were affected, but almost none of it is going to go into creating internal security teams that can secure your systems without injecting buggy C++ code into your kernel. The best that we can honestly hope for in this cyberpunk dystopia is that the next security appliance that every major corporation chooses to use is written in Rust. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, based.win. Get yourself some awesome merch like the Little Damon or Libre t-shirt and save yourself 10% at checkout by paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.